whatever the means adopted, you must at last return to the Self. So why not abide as the Self here and now? What is not permanent is not worth striving for. You are the Self. You are already that. Meditation is your true nature. You call it meditation now because there are thoughts distracting you. When these thoughts are dispelled, you will remain alone in the state free from thoughts. And that is your real nature. Ramana says, happiness is inherent in man and is not due to external causes. One must realize his self in order to open the store of unalloyed happiness. All spiritual scriptures are meant to make man re retrace his steps to his original source. He need not gain anything new. He must only give up his false ideas and useless attritions. Instead of doing it, he tries to catch hold of something strange and mysterious because he believes that his happiness lies elsewhere. You impose limitations on your true nature of infinite being and then weep that you are but a finite creature. Then you take up this or that practice to transcend the non-existent limitations. But if your practice itself assumes the existence of the limitations, how can it help you to transcend them? Self-inquiry directly leads to self-realization by removing the obstacles which make you think that the self is not already realized. Self-inquiry is certainly not an empty formula. It is more than the repetition of a sacred syllable. If the inquiry, who am I, were a mere mental questioning, it would not be of much value. Self-inquiry consists not in orally repeating I, I, but in searching by means of a deeply introverted mind where from the I springs. To think I am not this or I am that may be of help in the inquiry, but cannot be the true inquiry. Self-inquiry can reveal the truth that neither the ego nor the mind really exists and enable one to realize the pure, undifferentiated being of the self or the absolute. Solitude is in the mind. One might be in the thick of the world and maintain serenity of mind. Such a one is in solitude. Another may stay in the forest but still be unable to control his mind. He cannot be said to be in solitude. Solitude is a function of the mind. If one remains fixed in the self, activities will still go on and their success will not be affected. One should not have the idea that one is the doer. That force, by whatever name you call it, which brought the body into existence, will see to it 
that the activities which the body is meant to go through are brought about. The feeling, I work, is the hindrance. Inquire who works. Make no effort either to work or to renounce work. Your effort is the bondage. Call it by any name, God, Self, the Heart, or the Seat of Consciousness. It is all the same. The point to be grasped is this, that Heart means the very core of one's being, the center without which there is nothing whatever. Questioner, how is the mind to dive into the Heart? Maharshi, the mind now sees itself diversified as the universe. If the diversity is not manifest, it remains in its own essence. That is the heart. Entering the heart means remaining without distractions. The heart is the only reality. The mind is only a transient phase. To remain as oneself is to enter the heart. Self-surrender is the same as self-knowledge, and either of them implies self-control. Surrender can take effect only when it is done with full knowledge as to what real surrender means. Such knowledge comes after inquiry and reflection and ends invariably in self-surrender. Surrender is to give oneself up to the original cause of one's being. Do not delude yourself by imagining such a source to be some god outside of you. One source is within oneself. Give yourself up to it. That means you should seek the source and merge in it. Mind is a wonderful force inherent in the self. That which rises in this body as I is the mind. If the mind, which is the instrument of knowledge and is the basis of all activity, subsides, the perception of the world as an objective reality ceases. Investigate what the mind is and it will disappear. There is no such thing as mind apart from thought. There is no use removing doubts. If we clear one doubt another arises and there will be no end of doubts. All doubts will cease only when the doubter and his source have been found Seek for the source of the doubter, and you will find that he is really non-existent. Doubter ceasing, doubts will cease. When the mind gets absorbed in the heart, the ego I, which is the center of the multitude of thoughts, vanishes, and pure consciousness, or the self, which subsists during all the states of the mind, alone remains resplendent. It is this state where there is not the slightest trace of the I thought that is the true being of oneself. It is the undifferentiated light of pure consciousness into which the reflected light of the mind is completely absorbed. There are neither good nor bad qualities in the self. The self is free from all quality. If there is unity, there will also be duality. The numeral one gives rise to other numbers. 
The truth is neither one nor two. It is as it is. A visitor asked, When an endeavor is made to lead the right life and to concentrate thought on the self, there is often a downfall and break. What is to be done? Ramana replied, It will come all right in the end. There is the steady impulse of your determination that sets you on your feet again after every downfall and breakdown. Gradually the obstacles are all overcome and your current becomes stronger. Everything comes right in the end. Steady determination is what is required. It is no doubt said in some books that one should go on cultivating one good quality after another and thus prepare for liberation. But for those who follow the path of self-inquiry, their effort is itself quite enough for acquiring all good qualities. They need not do anything else. Ramana sat in a modest hall, available day and night to answer questions from sincere seekers. His only possessions were a loincloth and a towel. He never asked anything from anyone. Until the frailty of age set in, there were no set hours for approaching him. During the final year of his life, devotees were requested to let him rest at midday. In response to this request by ashram authorities, Ramana himself sat outside the hall until the rule was retracted. Reality being yourself, there is nothing for you to realize. All that is required is that you should give up regarding the unreal as real. Effortless and choiceless awareness is our real state. If we can attain it or be in it, that is all right. But generally one cannot reach it without effort, the effort of deliberate meditation. All the age-long tendencies carry the mind outward and turn it to external objects. All such thoughts have to be given up and the mind turned inward. For that, effort is necessary for most people. Questioner, mind always wanders. I cannot control it. Maharshi, it is the nature of the mind to wander. You are not the mind. The mind springs up and sinks down. It is impermanent, transitory, whereas you are eternal. Knowing one's self is only being one's self, as there is no second existence. This is self-realization. The state we call realization is simply being one's self, not knowing anything or becoming anything. If one has realized he is that which alone is and which alone has always been, he cannot describe that state. He can only be that. Still, it is a wonder that to teach this simple truth, there should come into being so many religions, creeds, methods, and the disputes among them. Oh, the pity. Oh, the pity. On April 14, 1950, his physical end was apparent. The last photo of Ramana was by the French photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson, taken just 10 days before the Maharshi left the body. In the evening, 
as devotees sat on the terrace outside the room built specially for his convenience during this last illness. They spontaneously began to sing the refrain to one of his stirring hymns to Arunachala. On hearing it, Ramana's eyes opened and shone. He gave a brief smile of indescribable tenderness. From the outer corner of his eyes, tears of bliss rolled down. One more deep breath, and no more. To those who begged him not to leave, Ramana made it very clear that he was not the body, so there was no concern for his leaving. He told those around him, they say that I am dying, but I am not going away. Where could I go? I am here. 